Arthur Young once said, God sleeps in the minerals, awakens in plants, walks in animals, and thinks in men. Keep this in mind as we discuss today the true value of rare earth minerals and what does it mean for the competition, the geopolitical competition between China and the United States. My name is Dr. David Waralu. And my name is Dr. Ross Stewart. And you are watching Geopolitics in Conflict. As always, we'd like to thank our viewers for first watching and second for subscribing. The subscription is most important to us getting the message out. And we also want to thank our Patreon members for the continued support. And for you, if you like our videos and you want to support us, consider joining our Patreon membership. Once again, thank you very much for all your support. Back to our topic, Russ. Let's talk about some Rare funny earth. stuff. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Well, we're going to talk about rare earth, rare earth minerals, if there really are rare earth minerals. And what's your take on all this? Because there seems to be a lot of talk about this right yeah. now. Well, because, first of all, just to clarify for our viewers, why are we talking about rare earth minerals? It's because that is what's behind the competition between the United States and China. And we're going to dig into it as we move forward. And as always... There's news behind the news exactly. that tells a very different story from what we're hearing in the media. Exactly. Well, as you said, uh, Ross, rare earth, they are not rare. Those are elements in, into the underground. And, and I'm going to share with our viewers some uh, names, if you permit me here, because the I'll bear with you. I'll bear with you. <laughs> the pronunciation is challenging. So you get, for example, Promethium, okay? uh, Samarium, Europium. And there is one that I had a hard time pronouncing called gadolinium. Yeah, I think you did great. <laughs> well, it's, I had to sort of look them up and to understand. Well, those are elements that exist in, in all around the world, different parts of the world and the ground. The challenge for the rare earth mineral, why we call them rare earth, is because they are dirty. They are hard to get to. And so there, are they plentiful in China? Yes. Are they plentiful in Afghanistan? Yes. Are they plentiful in the United States? Yes. They are plentiful. Yeah. The process to get them out of the earth and yeah. into a usable form for high technology is so dirty that the United States wants no part of it. Yeah. Well, so, so where do they ship it? To China. They've been shipping it to China. As a matter of fact, uh, we do have in the United States, there are three states, Wyoming, California and Texas, Texas, they do have large deposits of rare earth minerals. But guess what we do? When we get them out, we just ship it out to China because it's so dirty. The environment, it gets very complicated here with the environment laws. It really ruins the water table that's in each what, one of these states. That, and that, that, that's unacceptable. Yeah, and that is one of the reasons why they send them to China. So China, basically, just to clarify this, China doesn't hold like a hoard on the on the rare earth minerals. They don't have as much as some people might think. What China has is the process. They're controlling this supply chain. And that means yeah. that they get to control about 90% of rare earth mineral distribution worldwide. Well, if you because, could, yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Ross. Because they're processing it and putting up with the pollution. You're absolutely correct. It's the same approach to manufacturing. It is exactly the yeah. same. So you remember a couple of decades ago when we will send our stuff to China to manufacture technology and so forth? They were willing to do the work. So why all of a sudden we are blaming them for, well, you can't have this, you can't have that. So knowing that the future depends on those elements. I, I got some information that I'd like to share with our viewers here where this uh, rare earth mineral is going to be used. It's going to be used on consumer electronics. Yes, okay? and that's everything. Yeah, the high-tech devices, okay, smartphones, digital cameras, 
flat TV screens, computer disks, and even in military applications. Oh, I'll bet. The batteries, you name it. So, so basically you can just see now that this rare earth mineral is not just an economic issue, it's geopolitical. Military, consumer goods, so much depends on yeah. the supply of these rare earth minerals for manufacturing of everything. Exactly. And you add to that now the shortage of the microchips. So you can just see. So for the world blaming China, it's nonsense. David, do we have any evidence that the Chinese were price gouging or blackmailing or intimidating people to, in terms of, we're going to keep it and not give it to you? No, no, I didn't find any. I looked into some uh, uh, archives to just to look at where the information, I didn't see. What I did see is that China uh, was very strategic in its approach to dealing with this. Not yesterday, not the day before. That was a couple of decades ago. That is why they end up being that supply chain. It's a very, very smart strategy for China to manage its economy on the global scale. They managed it well from the tech level, and now they're managing, managing it from the rare earth mineral. That is why uh, it supports your, uh, the stats you provided, about 90%. Yeah. That's what it means. That doesn't mean that China has 90% of the rare earth mineral. No. It's the, the processing and the production by China doing that end up controlling 90% of the final products of all that. And that in itself explains to you now and for you also to know why there is this military maneuvering in that part of the world. What could possibly be the West's motivation in, in bringing this whole thing up uh, when the Chinese are so willing, we'll just send, we'll, you send us the, you'll send us the raw goods and we'll send you the product and without, without any conditions except you pay for it. Well, the big concern for that from the West perspective will be like, as we said, these this rare earth minerals, those elements can be used in uh, the, the uh, electri uh, electric cars. Oh, yeah. They can have military applications. I mean, it can be used for space programs. You can't just, I mean, for China, using it not only for 5G, but using it for 6G generation. Well, do we have any indication that, this is, that there's actually a scarcity of this stuff? Uh, no, it's not. It's, it's just China controls 90% of it. 90, they're willing to put up the pollution to it, manufacture exactly. it and purify it. And other countries, like in Africa, because they do have it, in Afghanistan. and that Loaded with yeah, it. Yeah, and it explains now why China and Taliban are getting into it. There is an economic element to it, and exactly the rare earth minerals. So... And this explains, once again, from a geopolitical perspective, because this one has two tracks, one economic and one geopolitical. From the geopolitical perspective, you can just see why the West, for example, is increasing its assets, military assets in Asia. I have some stats here I'd like to share with our viewers, and we'll have a link, to, uh, we'll have a link for our viewers to, to see. For example, uh, they are about, uh, the U.S. has about... 10 F-15s, okay, 25 F-22s, two squadrons, and two C-130s, all deal with around the area of China to ensure access to these rare earth minerals. So it tells you right there the intensity of this. Am I off track when I think if, there, if any kind of real conflict comes up, China's just going to cut off the rare earth minerals to the United States? And that is where the danger from the West perspective, because all China needs to do, because now you can't just be fighting over. You remember a couple of decades ago, it, it, we used to say it would be a war over oil. Right. Well, now guess what? It could be a war over rare, rare earth, earth minerals. minerals. Yes. So to China, yeah, China doesn't have to fire anything. All China needs to do is cut, cut off, off the, the supply. supply. <laughs> That's it. And that is in itself is a powerful tool because are we to blame them? We're the one who gave them the, the, the unfinished product and they finished it. And it was all by agreement. Exactly. So I don't see the rationale for why the West is crying foul after we decided, 
hey China, you want to deal with the, uh, the, 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 dirt, the dirty work of the rare earth mineral? Here it is. You process it, you work it, and, 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 and you go from there. So we take a look at what the trend here is. Mm. We'll, send you, we'll send you the technology, and you make the products, sell them to us for cheap. Now we're going to send you the ore, that's yeah. all consumer goods. Exactly. Okay, so then we said, we'll send you the ore, you take care of all the pollution and, dirty, and dirt in it, mm -hmm. and send us the, 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 the pure product, and all by agreement. Now where's the objection to this? Exactly. But China also understands one fundamental reality, and the reality is this. China understands that the U.S. is its biggest market. So you want, you want to sell your product to the biggest market, that's how you make money. Exactly. China is making money because of the U.S. market. And that's, that's, that's a fundamental thing that you need to know and understand. That China also is thinking in terms of, I can't just cut off the supplies completely. Because otherwise, where are they going to sell their products to, you know, the, you, you can't ignore the U.S. Uh, as a market because right. we are a, a consuming society. We consume so I mean, you look at your dishwasher, the TV, <laughs> the fridge, where all coming from. Right. Yeah. So that is, the, uh, that is the element that China is really taking into consideration moving forward. However, there is one fundamental argument and that a war could erupt over the control of the rare earth minerals because all the technologies moving forward of the future depends on that. So that is one of the biggest things. This is almost unthinkably irrational. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So uh, I, I can now see, uh, and it took me a while for even uh, to figure that out as to maybe these tensions between the US and China is not just about trade. It's not just about Taiwan. It's not just about Hong Kong. Maybe it has to do with something we do not even know what it is. And then it emerges. Exactly. Exactly. David, what would you say is the takeaway from this for our, our viewers? Well, it's the importance of uh, rare earth minerals into the products we have at home. Anything we have electronically, per se, has to have some rare earth mineral in it. And where that's coming from? is China. Yes, we have it here, but we don't, we don't, we don't work it, we don't, we don't want to work it because of the environment, whatever. So, so any, any time you think in terms of appliances or your smartphone, whatever, think of rare earth mineral. It's a very, very crucial element. Don't forget to like, share, and mostly subscribe to our channel. It really helps us in terms of viewership and getting our message out to the world. Thanks for watching. And as always, stay informed. Till next time. Bye-bye.